In today's video, I'll be testing out the best cell phone life hacks from 2018, including making a DIY phone charging station, creating a spiral phone charger, making a DIY cell phone photocopier, that is way easier than the original design, taking a shower with my phone, and actually removing a scratch from my phone screen using nothing but toothpaste. Hopefully. Plus more things you guys dared me to do in the comment section. In the last video, I asked you guys to tell me something that you wish you could undo, and your comments were interesting, to say the least. I mean, I had no idea you guys had so many regrets. Now, I kinda regret asking. But since you guys came up with so many comments, I thought I'd ask another one. What is something that makes you happy? It could be your favorite video game, or hanging out with friends, or maybe your favorite YouTuber, whoever that might be. Just put whatever you can come up with and I'll be featuring 10 of my favorite comments in the next video. And of course, keep leaving your dares. Now let's get this thing going. For this next part in today's video, what I'm be doing is showing you guys how to make a photocopier using nothing but a phone, a tripod, and just any random thing you can find around your house to stack up. It was at this point that I realized that most of you guys probably don't just have tripods laying around like I do. So mid-filming, I recreated the photocopier just using whatever was around me. Now what gave me the idea to do this is I saw another life hack on how to make a photocopier that was very precise, and it looked like it would be pretty difficult to build. It was also using corrugated cardboard, which is a product that you don't find at every store. You'd have to go to like an office supply store or something like that. Now in the first design, they give you exact measurements that you have to follow because if you're off by just a little bit or if there's an angle to your phone the photocopy machine isn't gonna work so you're likely gonna have to make a lot of adjustments especially considering that not everybody has the same kind of phone and there's different aspect ratios etc so that design would not work for everyone so what I've come up with is a tripod with a cell phone extension put onto it but if you have just like a flat edge anything will work just fine as a matter of fact I'm not even gonna use this setup I'm gonna make a different one over here just to show you what I mean you don't need a tripod or anything the idea is that you just get the phone over top of what you're trying to take a photocopy of and as long as it's too far away and not too close then you can always just add in stuff underneath it to bring it to the level it needs to be pretty simple so right here I'm gonna be using a life hack that actually failed which was trying to make a projector but it'll work just fine as a photocopier base just in case anyone was wondering why there was a giant hole in that shoebox what and this is the document that I'm gonna be needing to take a photocopy of because obviously I need to sign it and send it back And believe it or not, that's actually pretty perfect. Now I actually take photocopies a lot using my phone, using a similar method to this, but they would just come out really, really haggard looking. This is actually something that can work on a consistent basis. I didn't need anything special to make this. I actually had another one built right here out of other random things from around my house. But I'm gonna take the photo and show you how you can sign it and then send it to someone. And that was pretty easy. Now the lighting might not be perfect on this because I've got giant studio lights behind me, but ordinarily it would be pretty even. Especially because you can move the lamps around as much as you want at your own house. But we're filming something right now, so I have to be blinded with lights constantly. Well anyways, let's sign our document and we'll send it out. So pretty much all new phones work the same way. Just click edit, select the pen tool, and sign with your finger. Then just click done when you're done. Now for this next life hack, we're going to be making a spiral phone charger using the most common method found online and it kinda sucks. So recently, everybody wants a spiral phone charger. Not really sure why, I guess it has a cool nostalgia vibe and you can get to play with it with, around your finger like that, but they don't make many chargers like that. And I gotta admit, it is kinda cooler to have one that's retractable so it makes less of a mess than this. And it'll probably also prevent it from getting knotted up as well. And all of these are good things. But the internet has come up with a solution for all of this, and that is wrapping the phone charger around something and then using a blow dryer to heat it to that shape. I'm not sure how well this is gonna work. I have my doubts, but we're gonna give it a shot anyways and find out. Now I'm gonna use these giant clamps to hold this thing down, but you can use whatever you want. A piece of tape would have done just fine. And that looks pretty good to me. Now I just wrap it around this the rest of the way. That's actually kind of amazing that it fits it that perfectly. I had just enough length on the screw to wrap the entire cord around it. That's pretty cool. All right, let's get this thing going and see if it actually works. I'm gonna turn this all the way up on high heat and we'll see what it does. Now after you're done hitting it with the blow dryer, you're gonna wanna let it cool for at least a couple of minutes, which I've already done. So now I'm just gonna unclamp this and see what kind of product we've made. This thing is so tight that I actually have to unscrew this screw. That is pretty awesome. 
Wow. This cord was a giant mess before. It's the exact sort of thing that would get knotted up in your pocket, but not anymore. And it'll give my phone that cool retro vibe. But something tells me that if we stretch this thing out, it is not gonna come back to form. So right now it's about as long as the tip of this to the end. But if I stretch it out, does it come back? Duh. Not quite, but still pretty cool. Either way, this is definitely a lot better than it was before. It's not quite the spiral phone cord you remember from back in the day. Well, a lot of you guys probably aren't old enough to remember house phones, but this is not the exact spiral cord that your parents used to use back in the day, but it's close and it was free to try. And that being said, we'll be on to the next life hack. That one kind of sucks. Moving along. For this next life hack, what I'm gonna be doing is making a charging station. Now I had some leftover lumber from when I was building the deck out back. Again, this is just one inch board by four inches. The actual measurements is 0.75 by 1.5. Don't ask me why. That's just how they do it. So I took one piece of leftover board cutting three, three and a half squares, which is pretty easy to do. Then using that board, I took another and I made one line here, then another one an inch and a half later so I could fit my cell phone. And basically all this is is to mark out where I'm gonna be needing to place these boards once I have them cut out. Might look complicated right now, but trust me, this is gonna be a really simple build. I'll be using that as a workbench today. And am I gonna be using a reciprocating saw indoors? You betcha. Does that mean that you should? Probably not. You don't really need to worry if you didn't follow any of what I was saying. You'll be able to tell how to make this as soon as you see the finished product. All I'm gonna do is take this board that I marked up earlier and these square pieces of wood, and I'm gonna set them in the outlines that I've already drawn. So for example, this first one is gonna go right here on the end. Well, as it turns out, these gigantic deck nails are probably too much for this tiny piece of wood. So I went and found some other screws and nails and whatever else I could come up with, which is okay, because that's kind of what I'm expecting you guys to do if you wanted to do this project at home. A life hack isn't a really good life hack if it requires a ton of preparation. And the first piece is in there, and that's feeling pretty solid, actually. And my plan is just to give it a little bit of a lip right there. Not really sure why, but that's how I'm gonna build this. And now I think just for fun, I'm gonna permanent marker this thing up. But right now, it's already a very good phone caddy. That's awesome. I am not a good woodworker, but I'm actually really proud of the way this turned out. That looks pretty cool. Meh. I'm done. Uh, I don't know how awesome you think it is, but I really like what I've built here. And I bet it does a pretty good job of holding all of my electronic devices. And what do you know? It does. So I definitely think that that is pretty awesome. It holds lots of different devices. Of course, I'm always proud of the stuff that I build, but this thing in particular, it actually looks like something I might use and keep around the house. Who knows, maybe I'll throw a can of spray paint on it or something like that, but other than that, it's pretty much done. And that being said, we'll be on to the next life hack. So recently, there's been a popular method for waterproofing your phone while you're in the shower, which is hanging a plastic bag from a coat hanger. And although that seems like it would work, it probably will cost you your phone if it does not. That being said, I'm gonna be putting that to the test with my phone, so I really hope this thing works. And it should, because it's gonna be inside of a plastic bag. But to find out how well that works and whether or not I can actually access different things on my phone while it's in there, we gotta try it out first. So let's get this thing going. Okay, well right off the bat, I can tell that I can at least open it while it's in the bag. The thumbprint still works. However, if you have one of the newer phones that opens up with facial recognition, I'm not sure how well it would work. I would assume it would probably work okay seeing as how the bags are clear, unless you're not using a clear bag, in which case you're not gonna be able to see your video anyways. And you can swipe through your apps pretty good, so, so far so good. I'm gonna seal the bag up, fold it over the coat hanger. Also, if that just happens to slide off and fall, it could break my phone because it's not very well protected and it would be falling onto tile from like several feet up. This could end badly. Okay, I'm just gonna play a video and then I'm gonna splash it with water and just take a normal shower and see how it performs. Playing the video. Dear God. So the results are, it was pretty easy to watch the video in the shower, actually. In the comment section. It never fell off there even once. So I guess as long as I don't touch it, it'll be fine. And it seems like my phone made it through it. 
without breaking. So I can't say I'm displeased with the results. Happy to say that this life hack actually works. Not like those stupid cell phone projectors. And that being said, we'll be on to the next life hack. And finally, I wanted to retry a life hack that a lot of you guys insisted would work. And that is buffing a scratch out of your phone screen with toothpaste. I recently used this method to remove a crack from my phone screen because life hack channels swore to me that this would work. And it did not. But recently, many of you guys claimed that this life hack would work on a small scratch. And shortly after I got a new screen protector, I got a scratch on it. It was almost as if to say that maybe I should give this another shot. So that's what I'm gonna do. But first, I wanted to give you guys a quick look at the scratch itself before I try to remove it, so that way we can get more of a sense of before and after. Okay, there it is. I was really trying like crazy to find an angle that would actually work. And now you can see a couple other scratches. And I'm gonna try to take these out as best I can, but we'll see how well that works out. That was actually really difficult to get that shot. I had to get the camera off of the tripod to even be able to look at it. So if I can't tell the difference after I'm done polishing this off, I probably won't even bother to do that again. That being said, I'm about to apply the toothpaste and I guess we'll have to see what happens. Now all the life hack videos I saw said to use your finger to just rub it in. So that's what I'm gonna do. And I'm gonna spend a good amount of time trying to work this in as well, because, well, what do I gotta lose? I mean, besides the functionality of my cell phone. I can already immediately see that the scratch is still there. But I gotta admit, I kinda figured as much going into it, so... No surprises there. And now I'll be off to the next life hack. But if you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave it a like. Make sure to subscribe if you've yet to have done that. If you'd actually like to see the videos, please bell me for notifications. And as always, I'll be seeing you guys in just a few days with a new video. All right, thanks guys. Bye. Is that your phone? Yes. Is that your actual phone? <laughs> yes. Are you crazy?